So we just lost some footage, but it was only 10 minutes, luckily enough. Uh, if this game crashes, we lose everything. Uh, yeah. Which is unfortunate. So I hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> Because we're not keeping track of what we're doing, and there's no way to do that. Unless we write it down. We're not gonna go through that effort. But we're not gonna go through that effort. Uh, to move on from that, though, I've been seeing a lot of news stories lately talking about how there's a Sonic 2 movie gonna happen, and I don't know if that's wishful thinking or if it's confirmed because I haven't, I haven't looked into it. But I want to know how you feel about that. The sequel to the Sonic movie. Um. They set one up. They did. So I'm very happy and curious to see what Jim Carrey has in store for me. I I think I might have read something that says he's gearing up for a sequel, but I don't remember because it was straight off of Waking Up. Well, they made a whole bunch of money. They did. They made a whole bunch of money. And that movie wasn't terrible either. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a bomb. Like, I, I was expecting it to kind of be a trash fire. I was waiting for this love. Excuse you? I know I can, so I won't. Bro's <laughs> little feet kick all the way up in the air. He doesn't bend his legs. I was waiting to do this level. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. Really uh, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey went a little nuts, and that's true. Well, he was sad. But yes. But there were things happening. So everybody who was like, Jim Carrey is insane now. They removed the context of what happened in his life that caused him to be a different person. He had a radical shift and maybe he did go a little nuts. But the things that he says, maybe I'm nuts too. I hear it. I feel that. I feel some of the stuff he says sometimes. Well, you remember that, that video where that stupid oh, that... lady went up to him oh. and was like, do you have a date? Maybe she's not such a hate. Yeah, hold on, real quick, I just want to say this. I've decided I don't give a shit. I'm going to talk about freaking suicide, because that's a serious thing. Okay, uh, And we're not mocking it, so YouTube, hey, if you're listening to this, and you, you, you pull some shit, you can eat my freaking asshole. So anyway, she, she like, basically, I think she just straight up says to his face, I know your girlfriend just committed suicide. I don't, I, okay. It was that freaking brainless. It was brainless, but I don't think she phrased it like that. I believe she did. Okay, let me finish my sentence. I'm sorry, I'm just going ape shit. Freaking turd. No more energy drinks. So, <laughs> I agree. She, she, she just, okay. He clearly wasn't there, right? His, it wasn't, I, I don't know like, if it was his girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend, but like, it was very recent that they had split and she had, she'd committed suicide. She'd ended it. And he was not in a good spot. But this one was just like, what, you didn't bring a new date? You couldn't get a new girl? Like, she said it really stupid like that. She said like something that. really bitchy. Yeah. yeah. And you could see the shift in his face. And after that, he was like, oh, no, I'm not wasting my time at one of these stupid functions. Like, well, But he played it off really well. Like, he wasn't aggressive. He he, he, he got really aggressive. He got really flustered. Well, he didn't... Not aggressive, excuse me. He got really flustered. Yeah. He was flustered, but he played it off. And so she looked around at the camera like, what is he doing? Well, what, what, she, what, she, what happened with Ruth Shane was she was like, well, this is a, he, he goes, well, this is all pointless, you know? I wanted to go to the most pointless thing I could imagine, or I could find, and this just happened to be it. And she's like, so you wanted to go to something that was pointless? And she just tries to, like, take... Take the reins back. I, I was, I'm trying... I don't want to say take the piss, but that's all I can think of right now. Uh, uh, but she starts kind of, like, to try to take the piss out of him. And then he starts, starts being like, well, neither of us matter. You don't matter, and I don't matter. And he goes into this, like, fatalist idea. Bring those gems back, asshole. What are you doing? You wanna see? Uh, anyway. So he just starts saying all that. And she just turns into a freaking hyper mega bitch. But she just, like, essentially just made him relive one of the most painful memories of his life. It was so disgustingly insensitive. Because, okay, as a reporter of any kind, it is your job to do your research, you know, especially for these things, right? If you celebrity central, you gotta know who you're talking to. And something like that, that it, it affected him so much, that she just casually brings that up and then tries to avoid, like, of clearly bothering him. She, she tries to make him the asshole. Exactly. That's what it was. Trying to, like, make it his fault. It, like, honestly, I would have preferred just spit in her stupid face and shove the mic in somewhere. But... You know, he, he handled it like a champ, and the way she looked at him just enraged me. 
Because you, you, you brought, you brought this thing you up. You made this man relive his, this pain, and then you're going to mock him. Exactly. He was in the process of grieving. It was, it was rough. I think he was just trying to get out of the house because he was sad. Did she get fired for that? I hope she got freaking shot. Oh, God. No, not shot. Sure. We do not get that. Uh, okay. I don't hope that she got shot. Thank you. Um... I do not hope she got shot. Be quiet. Um, I I don't know. It's just we're know. we're barely getting over like as a society we're barely getting over that stigma around suicide and depression Spyro. and stuff like that is there really frustrating. <sighs> like see. it is a serious oh. thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like let's let's talk about the Sopranos again. Uh, it, the, in The Sopranos, everybody's like, "Oh, he's going to go see a therapist. What's wrong with him?" So, like it was, a, it was the '90s were a different time. Yeah, yeah, that show. Yeah, I thought it was in the '90s. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess the 2000s. Whatever. It was a different time then. What's what's okay? So I've only finished season one right now. What's fascinating about it to me is I remember like as it was coming out and stuff, or when my parents were watching it, nobody ever talked about The Sopranos unless they're talking about the ending. And how the like a bunch of people were getting killed. Or they were just saying, "Who's gonna get whacked this week?" Yeah, isn't that fun? It's isn't not the that Walking the most Dead. Annoying. <laughs> um. So I I just thought it was like a mafia show where a lot of people got whacked, right? No, it's it's the like Hulu. I saw it. It was like, oh, this mafia like boss um, yeah. is struggling with anxiety, and that. I said, huh, that's not... I mean, I knew he saw a therapist, but I, I just thought it was some sort of, like, gimmick thing. No. It's... There's depth to the show. It's fascinating. It's it's fascinating seeing, like, this traditionally... Um, masculine. Masculine. Oh, God. Representation of a dude, you know, trying to explore what, what that means and, and coming to terms with the fact that, you know, he's not got to be tough all the time, and he can't. But he's still dealing with anger and things, and he's trying to get a handle on it because he doesn't want to be a monster, and he wants to be better for his family. And at the end, spoilers, at the end of that season, he tells his crew, like, you know, his inner circle, like, I want you to know from me, not as rumors, because everyone's using it against him, trying to say he's crazy, he's unstable, he's a wimp, he's a big mouth, a rat, whatever. But he's talking to his crew, and he's like, hey, I want you to know that I'm seeing a therapist. I don't use your names, I don't do this, right? But he's, like, trying to cover his own butt before he's even in really talking about himself and how much he needs it he's trying to like justify it and not seem like you know not not the boss and they all kind of open up and they're like oh i understand you know yeah, one most of them, of them. One, one of them, them runs out but we don't like that character <laughs> one, of, one of the guys is like yeah I, I saw a therapist a couple years ago yeah and he, lined, he, he opens up he and opens it up it's very sweet and it's just like i i wasn't expecting this kind of topic to be tackled in such an efficient way that early on because i've only seen it recently but you know i didn't watch it as a kid so it's just it's nice it is we need more of that more open discussion and it sucks that that's not what people talk about when i hear about that show we get a lot of open discussion these days but it always feels like see guys we're talking about it too well because you get things like i lied i took them out <sighs> you get things like 13 reasons why and <sighs> Don't get me wrong, okay? I hesitate to talk about that show. Okay. I watched it, alright? I watched the first two episodes, and I couldn't handle it. I, I sat down and I said, you know what, friends on my Facebook? I can't watch this. It's irritating. It's Degrassi. All she's doing is blaming everyone for her problems, and I want to empathize, but she's awful. And I looked up the way the book goes, because it's written as a book first, and she she's disgusting. This character in the book is just gross. Bad things happen to her, but she lets bad things happens to uh, happens to others and makes it about herself. And it is oh. the most nasty behavior I've ever seen. And you know, you want to say like, oh, well, she had her problems, whatever. No, the way the book is written, that author wrote a disgusting like narcissist. Um, but I was assured that the show handled it a little bit differently. Now, the issues I still have with Hannah Baker in the show exist in the show, but it's to a lesser degree. And as far as I know, the show confronts the fact that Hannah is not a perfect person and does not deserve as much sympathy as she's trying to drum up. 